Okay, sorry, recording people. Um, you know, I love that. I think it's so, I said no for four years before I finally decided to join as a coach, literally four years. I first heard about this when Lindsay Matway started in 2010 and I wanted nothing to do with it. And then several times throughout the years, it was something that came into my head, came into my head, um, and I ignored it. I pushed it back um, and said it wasn't for me. Just get used to the idea that there's going to be a lot of rejection on the way to your goal. The key is to not give up. When someone says no, you keep asking. Because when you keep asking, even the same person again and again, you might get a yes. You might get a yes on a different day when the person is in a better mood after you've proven your commitment to them, when circumstances have changed, when you've learned how to close the deal better, when the person trusts you more, when the economy is better. Gosh, that is so true. And that is why I will say it now and I'm gonna say it again. Start, I don't, keep track of your contacts. Anyone who commented, oh, I might like to do that. Anyone who messaged you, what is this challenge group thing you're doing? Um, I don't care if they never messaged you back after you, you know, that initial message. Write their name down because in six months, some of you newer coaches, you are going to have such a better idea of how to do this, how to sell, how to close the deal. And you're going to follow up with those people and remind them that you're there and you are still running monthly challenge groups and you're gonna be better at your job by then and they might join you that time. Um, this is really good. Um, oh, and I did wanna say, man, if you guys can't handle no, if you guys are gonna get discouraged because you had six people you thought were interested and all six said no, you. You might need to grow tougher skin or get out of the business. And I know that's tough, but it's true. Um, and I'm not taking away from the fact that it's disappointing. It is disappointing. You know, especially, again, you have those people that are messaging you back rapid fire every time, and then they disappear. Or then all of a sudden, they don't have the money. Or all of a sudden, they've found another person. DVD they're going to use, or they found some videos on YouTube that they're just going to use for now. Um, I'm not taking away from the disappointment, but like, I love that. Get used to rejection because that's, that's what we're going to get a lot more no's than you're ever going to get yeses. Um, but the more people you ask, the more yeses you'll get. Um, Herbert True, a marketing specialist at Notre Dame University, found that 44% of all salespeople quit trying to sell to a prospect after the first call, 24% quit after the second call, 14% quit after the third call, and 12% after the fourth call. 94% of all salespeople quit after the fourth call but 60% of sales are made after the fourth call. Um, again, I love that. That is, we talk about the follow-up in Beachbody. And you know, I don't like referring to us as salespeople, but the bottom line is we know that's what we're doing. Um, we're sharing the opportunity. We're sharing the products with others. Um, and it doesn't mean we have to be obnoxious like a salesperson, like some salespeople might be, but that is what we're doing. And in Beachbody, we call it the follow-up. And you cannot be afraid to follow up with people. I have felt like I'm annoying people. And then they've been like, oh, I'm so glad you reminded me. I noticed once I became a Beachbody coach, I live and died by my Facebook messenger. And like, I got back to people within five minutes. But guess what? Beachbody is not everyone's priority. Like they thought they saw your post a few days ago. They're like, oh, that might be cool. So you message them right away and they have a life, you know, they have stuff to do. And three days later, they haven't messaged you back and you're panicking and they're just busy, you know? So, so often that's just the case. They're just busy. And yeah, some people decide they don't want to do it and they don't know how to tell you. So they just never message you back. That's fine too. Um, but you have to follow up. And there are so many, I need to, there are so many good ways to do that. And some of, you know, the more seasoned coaches, I think, know, and I obviously know. So 
let me know how, if you need help and what to say for the follow-up, but I'm going to give you my best, my, the best advice I can give you. And this is a call, there's a call from Brittany Leggett and it's amazing, but set yourself up for the follow-up. So here you go. Someone said they were interested in your next challenge group. So you message them. They never message you back. What do you, what do you, what do you say then? I would, I usually wait, you know, I usually will wait three or five days. I might just say, Hey, I didn't know if you're still interested. They still don't message me. I wait another week and I say, Hey, you know what? Must be a busy time for you. I totally understand. Um, would you mind if I kept you updated on my next, on my upcoming groups? You set yourself up for the follow-up. You are asking permission to message them again and let them, let them know about your group next month or the next month or the next month. Man, that takes the pressure off of them. Now you've given them their out. You know, you said, hey, it's okay if right now is not the time, but can I, you know, can I keep you updated? No one is going to say no. <laughs> no one's going to say no to that. So then in 30 days when you're starting your next group, you have been given permission. Say, hey, I just want to let you know my next group starts then. It's going to be a T25 group. Um, do you think it's something you'd be interested in? Is now a better time? Um, anyways, that's how I like to set myself up for the follow-up. You have to be willing to risk rejection though. And now this gets into the part about reject rejection. And again, this is, I referred to this earlier. It says rejection is a myth. You are no worse off if someone says no than you are before. Your situation stays the same. Rejection is created when you internalize the no and begin negative self-talk. He used the example of going to dinner. Um, you ask someone to dinner, they say no. You didn't, you already didn't have someone to go to dinner with. So them saying no didn't change your situation. You still have no one to go to dinner with. But it's what you do with that no. Do you say, I knew it. I knew she'd never go for me. I knew she didn't like me. No one's ever going to like me. No one's ever going to love me. Do you do that with Beachbody? No one's ever going to want to join one of my groups. I don't know why I keep doing this. This is, you know, embarrassing. Um, why do I keep putting myself out there like this? That is, you're creating rejection in your head. They're just busy. They just really don't have the money right now. They are just really happy doing their CrossFit right now. You know, um, they like the personal trainer they're working with right now. It's not personal. We create our own rejection. We create those feelings of rejection. Um, again, I can't, can't take credit for all this. Like this is Jack Canfield all the way. And he has a lot of good stuff to say though, as you can see, or I hope you think so. Um, don't get stuck in fear and resentment. Move on to the next person. Winston Churchill says this, and I love this. Um, success consists of going from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. Um, can you... And to me, the only way to do that is to always go back to your why. Why did you believe in these products to begin with? Especially those of you who started out as customers. You know, Shannon, she just loved Shakeology. That's the only reason she even signed up to be a coach is kind of for the discount. And hey, maybe if I can make some money. And now she's all into the business, which is amazing. But I would encourage her and all of you, when you're getting no's, 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 Try to go back. You just love these products. You believe in them and you want to share them with people. Then it doesn't really matter if people say no, you know, and that's the only way I think to keep going with no loss of enthusiasm. Um, this is really good. Um, Sylvester Stallone said this, I take rejection as someone blowing a bugle in my ear to wake me up and get going rather than retreat. I've said this September has been a slow month for a lot of people. Um, and I say, I don't like slow months at all, but I will tell you what, slow months get me out of my comfort zone. They make me get more creative in however I'm marketing myself or my groups. Um, they make me do different groups, you know, maybe groups with a book, maybe, you know, whatever. Um, they make me do more personal invites, which is the getting out of my comfort zone part. You know, they make me talk to more people. Um, so slow months can be good. and. I, I hope 
that you'll take rejection as, as feedback. Okay. How can send your messages to me? What would you have said, Dara? How can I change the wording? You know? Um, and again, maybe what, what did you think of my post for the invitation? What would you have changed? You know, some of you send me your posts and I think I'm honest, you know, I say, I love this, this, and this, I would maybe change this. Um, so I hope rejection will spur you on and help you learn. And gosh, I just believe in this business more than I ever have. And I know those first few months are overwhelming and stressful and frustrating. Um, but know that like time and momentum play a huge role in this business. And so if you can trust the process and trust me and trust your upline coach, when we say to trust the process, um, I really think it's going to be worth it as long as you're being consistent in the daily activities that we talk about, which is, you know, a whole other call. Um, but I wanted to share, these are just two examples. I was trying to think of, you know, people that I kind of had to follow up with um, and keep checking in with to either finally get the sale or have them as a coach. And I told Holly, I was going to talk about her tonight, but Holly is one of my, um, one of my most successful coaches in, on my team. Um, she's a current three-star diamond qualifying coach. Um, for those new coaches, once you become star diamond, you have to hold the rank for six weeks, which means like that diamond underneath you can't drop rank or you don't, you're not considered an official three-star diamond until, anyways, side note. She had joined a challenge group. I know this is, this started, so I love this because now Holly just quit her corporate job. She's killing it in this business, but guess what? She had the same concerns as everyone else. I just looked back at our messages. This is in July, maybe June. She's like, I'm worried. I'm, my only concern with ordering is the automatic renewal of monthly Shakeology shipments. If I don't like it, is it difficult to cancel? How often have you heard that from somebody? Um, I told her I understand. I promise you it's easy to cancel, delay, modify, and I will remind you. You know, new coaches, remind your people when their order's about to ship out. I know it's a little bit to keep track of, but trust me, you don't want that surprise $130 on their credit card and they forgot or didn't know about it. So a little side note there. This is like probably a, two weeks later, we're into the group. I told her how much I appreciated her participation. Um, I, I said, you know, I really think beach body coaching is something you should consider. Um, but you just seem really passionate about fitness. And so I at least I said, I, so I had to at least throw it out there. Let me know what you think. And I'd invited her to a sneak peek. She says, yes, add me to the group. It is something I'm passionate about. And maybe it's something I'll do once I decide to be a stay at home mom. So she didn't give me much. I mean, she's not even pregnant. She doesn't have kids. It's one of those, oh, great, in two years she might do it. Um, two weeks later, I hadn't heard from her. I said again, and I have to at least ask, have you thought any more about becoming a coach? Um, I know you've considered and said you feel it is something you would do down the road, but I'd love to hear more of your thoughts on that. Eleven days later, I hadn't heard from her. and. So I made up a, well, actually I did need to know, but, um, a great way to get back into people's faces is ask a question totally unrelated to Beachbody. So Holly has a successful blog already before she started Beachbody. So I asked her a question about blogging, you know, success tips. Um, but it got conversation going between us again. You see how I did that? And it's not insincere. I needed, you know, I wanted to know. So she said, um, I said, you know, I asked about the blog. Um, oh, and then, okay. Asked about the blog. Another week later, I asked her again if she was still considering coaching. Looking back, I'm like, man, I must have been annoying her to death. I mean, I've asked like three or four times now within a month. Um, her biggest concern, she's worried about reaching outside of her network and becoming salesy. Have you heard that before? I said, I understand, da, da, da. Three days later, Holly signed up. The point is, what if I hadn't followed up with Holly? What if I had been too scared that I was bothering her or annoying her? And again, I think I did it in a very pressure-free, obligation-free way. I do. I don't, I think I did it as best you can do 
when you're following up three times in three weeks about something like this. But nevertheless, what if I hadn't? What if I had just let her go? And maybe she would have come around a year later. Maybe she would have joined another coach. I don't know, you know? Um, and this, I'll just go through this quickly. I started a conversation with a girl last September of 2014. Beachbody, it was a conversation starter. Beachbody eventually came up. We kind of went back and forth. Didn't result in anything. December, I reached out again, asked her if she was interested in one of my groups. She, each time, I will say, she did show interest each time, but never purchased any of these times. December, I reached out again. March 2015, I reached out again. June 2015, I reached out again. July, she reached out to me and finally purchased a challenge pack. What if I hadn't been consistent in even running my groups? I always say, I don't care if you're not running your own groups. You should be advertising to a challenge group once a month. Because if you're not, if I hadn't been, Danielle probably could have found another coach to do a group with because she didn't know I was still doing them. But I was in her face. <laughs> My posts were out there. I was in her inbox just letting her know what was coming up. Um, so that's just where consistency with inviting, having a place to invite people. I know we've talked about this. There's a big difference in um, – Posting your healthy meals, posting your workout selfies, posting inspirational quotes, all that is so good. But eventually you have to invite someone to something or they're not going to get it. They're not going to understand what you're doing. They're just going to go, oh, 21 Day Fix, that's what she's doing. I'll just go buy it online then because you're not inviting to anything specific. I know we're getting off on some things here, but all really important stuff to me. Um, so invite to a group consistently. Um, at least monthly, so that people know you're still doing it. And that person you started the conversation with will come to you. Um, Lisa Carson is on this call. We had talked about Beachbody, gosh, I think June of 2014. It was a short conversation. She was happy with the shakes she was drinking. She never purchased. Over a year later, out of nowhere, I get a message. And she and my friend Kim want to join my team. I was like, what? <laughs> you had no interest in this 13 months ago. So again, I just can't say it enough. I know it's so hard when you're in it your first few months and every success club point feels like a struggle. But I can say with so much confidence that, man, if you could like have these conversations with people like you're already a five-star diamond coach and you're not so desperate for every point, they're going to go so much better and you're going to feel, give them so much freedom to ask questions and be scared and be hesitant. And you're not going to come across as manipulative or pushy or desperate. Um, people can sense that in your messages. So when you're messaging people pack, take a deep breath and message them back as if you were already a five-star diamond coach making a six-figure income doing this message. Um, it feels so much better and your customers, your potential customers will feel that. And um, that's really all I have. Um, but again, I love that there's so many new coaches on this call because I just think this is a topic that needs to be addressed. And I think it's just good to hear that it's normal to hear no. Um, there's a book called Go For No, which basically is the more no's you get, the more yeses you will eventually get of those no's. So, you know, instead of having like a success club goal, some teams have a, I want to, who can get a hundred no's this month, you know, and it's a numbers game. And I, I hate to put it like that, but it's true. I mean, if they say, what is it like out of 30 people you ask, three people are going to commit. Um, and so I say, you know, like some of you, you know, some months I'm like, oh, I have like five people that said they're going to buy. Um, well, I should probably count on one of them if that, <laughs> so just know that. And again, I'm not saying, especially new coaches, cause again, you kind of get momentum and people you talked to six months ago are going to come around. I'm not saying you need to personally invite 50 people that you haven't talked to in three years. You know, I think there needs to be some relationship built there first. Um, but work on your conversations, you know, again, um, don't just send them to your coach page, start the conversation with them. 
you know, ask them their goals. Why are they even interested? What have they been struggling with? And you're just starting that coach relationship right away. And they're going to see the value in that, that it's not just a product. They're getting you, someone who's interested in their health and their history and their future. So um, I know I threw in a bunch of little tidbits, but um, I, again, so um, I wish you could see it from where I'm sitting almost two years later in this business and um, be encouraged and keep going. Don't give up. Move on to the next person. Um, you know, I feel like I had more notes somewhere. As a matter of fact, I feel like I missed some stuff. Anyways, somewhere there was something like that was like, oh yeah, here it is. Okay, let me go through this stuff real fast. This was called like the whatever. It says some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. I love that. Some people are going to say yes, and some people are going to say no. So what? Out there somewhere, someone is waiting for you and your ideas or your challenge group or your coaching opportunity. It's simply a number ga numbers game. You have to keep asking until you get a yes. Um, that's the only one I missed. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. And I love that. Someone is waiting for you. Someone is waiting for your group to see your post, to see your transformation. Um, so keep doing what you're doing. Keep posting what a healthy lifestyle, healthy, fun, balanced lifestyle looks like. And thank you for being on the call. Our calls are getting so big. It's so exciting. <laughs> but I'm going to end it. Again, it's late. I appreciate you guys being on the call. And I did record it, by the way. But like, Jenny, thank you, reminded me like five minutes in. So for people who weren't here, they'll like miss the first few minutes. But anyhow. All right, guys. Love y'all. Have a good night. Thanks for being on.